ओके आई विल रीड ब्रो ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम ज्ञानति मीरांधा ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुर्मिलुर्मिलुर्व नम श्री चैतन्य मनोहम विष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददा स्वदाक वंदेह श्री गुरु श्रीयुत पद कमल श्री गुरु न वैष्णवास श्रीरूपम सागर जात स गण रघुनाता सजीव सवधेत सवधूत परिजन सहित श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान स गण ललिता श्री विशाखा विंतवाश हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तृप्त कांचन गौरांगे राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृष भानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाछा कल्पत्रुभ्य कृपा सिंधु स पतिता पावने भ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत श्री वाषादि गौर भक्त बृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नम ओं विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदाता स्वामी नीति नामिने नामस्ते सारस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिण निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात दिशतारिणे हरि भो थैंक यू सो मच प्रभु Okay Prabhu so today we start the new book and it's one of the most important books it's called the nectar of instruction so who who knows which place is this this is uh, rupa goswami uh, bhajan kutir yes prabhu samadhi gari bo this design is very nice prabhu yes prabhu actually in the newly uh, made temple uh, this uh, same this same uh, design they covered hmm uh, yes. and uh, uh, they mentioned their uh, madhu pandit you know hkm yes. hkm uh, head yeah so uh, he helped in construction hmm yes prabhu mm-hmm. Yes, they mentioned there also. Hari bol. This photo is very nice. Hari bol. Eleven lessons in the ancient science of bhakti yoga. Across five centuries and half the globe comes this compact guidebook of essential spiritual teachings. Yes, so this book is full of these teachings. It's almost only teachings for devotees. how to choose a guru how to practice yoga even where to live you'll find it all in this invaluable work originally written in sanskrit by shila rupa goswami the greatest spiritual genius of medieval india now translated and illuminated by rupa goswami's modern successor his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami prabhupad the nectar of instruction is the key to enlightenment for all seekers on the path of spiritual perfection Dibo here is his divine grace as he bhakti vrantha swami shri prabhupad ki jai Look at the garlands <laughs> So amazing Hall covered bro Yes bro <laughs> and it looks like fire <laughs> Yes bro Okay here is shri rupa goswami the author of shri Upade Samrita and numerous other volumes of Vaishnava philosophy he is the chief literary disciple of Sri Krishna Chaitanya the pioneer of the powerful sankirtan movement which began in India 5, 500 years ago Radhanan is there Yes bro You bring that bike huh? you can buy bike Yeah Oh, here is the temple of Radha Govinda. Radha Govinda Dev Ji. 
Yes, this is amazing. Radha Govinda. This is three, all three. Wow. Established in 16th century by Shilarupa Goswami, a conquering Mughal tyrant, Aurangzeb, dismantled the top four stories in envy of the temple's magnificence. Magnific yes, bro. Oh, it had even more. Yes, bro. It was a uh, seven floor actually. Mm. But uh, when uh, once a time, uh, what happened? Uh, they actually on the uh, uh, for seventh floor. Uh, Rupa Goswami and all the lamp, uh, uh, big lamp. So mm. the, uh, the what is that? Roshni, uh, the light of the lamp reached to the uh, Aurangzeb house. Mm. Yes, so he inquired. He inquired that uh, that light from coming from where. Then he got to know that uh, it's from only the Radha Govind Dev temple. Then uh -huh. he got envious. And then he ordered that uh, uh, immediately break that temple. Mm, yes, Prabhu. And uh, who saved Prabhu? You know, this floor, three floor. Who? How it happened? Uh, the, uh, the, you know, uh, the monkey of the Vindavan. Hmm. The, oh, this these Vindavan. All, all monkey, they attacked on that uh, Aurangzeb's, uh, 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 that soldier. Yes, and Prabhu. then immediately they ran away. Yes, Prabhu. Even like this, it looks so amazing. So I cannot Prabhu, imagine. In, in, in this uh, temple hall, uh, in front of this one uh, temple is there, Hanum Lord Hanuman's temple. Hmm. Oh, so uh, the monkeys came what from What is there. the name of that? Siddha, Siddha, Sing, Sing more, Sing more Hanuman Mandir, uh, like that, something in name. So hmm. uh, all the monkeys gathered there and then they attacked. <laughs> Haribol. Yes, that's really nice. So here is the personal deities. And the personal deity, this original deity is uh, situated in the Rajasthan, Jaipur now. Hmm. Yes, yes from Sri Sri Radha Govindaji. Jai. Yes, I really like this. Yes, bro. Place of this de deity. Hmm. Their feet Feet is original to the uh, Krishna, na, bro? Or face? Yes, bro. Hmm. Yes, bro. The eyes are <laughs> really nice. <laughs> yes, bro. That is, once, upon, once upon a time, Prabhupada said uh, in some lecture or what that. Uh, uh, only one temple in the Rajasthan where 5,000 people uh, gather for uh, Mangala Arti. Mm. Yes, Prabhu. So it's this temple. This is the only temple. Sri Sri Radha Govindaji, the beloved deities of Srila Rupa Goswami. At the time of Mughal inv invasion, they were moved to Jaipur, India, where they are presently being worshipped. Yes, Prabhu. Mm, so, yeah. People. The Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his intimate associates performing Sankirtan, original congregational chanting of the holy names of, of God. From left to right are the Sri Advaita Acharya, Lord Nityananda, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Gadada Pandit, and Sri Vinivas. Who knows? Whose incarnation is Sri Gadadhar Pandit? Oh, Prahlad Prabhu Ki Jai. <laughs> Did Himanshu Prabhu already, is is he coming? Is he on the way? Himanshu oh, Prabhu in the Lord laptop. Yes, Prabhu. Himanshu yes, Prabhu in the laptop. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Pandatanam Jai Sri Prabhu. I am Anantu Prabhu. I am Anantu Prabhu. I am Anantu Prabhu. I am Anantu Prabhu. Yes, thank you so much Prabhu. For giving the version of Prabhu Prabhu. So here is Sri Sri Radha Krishna.
the supreme person of Godhead and his eternal consort, of the many objects of favor, delight, and of all the below damsels of in Vrindavan, Srimati Radharani is the most treasured object of Krishna's love. <laughs> Very nice photo. Very nice. This garland is really amazing. Mm, garland is very finely made. Yes, Prabhupada, I like this. I don't know what this name is, but the color is really nice and it's it's like bluish but transparent at the same time. Here's Lord Krishna lifting Govardhan Hill during his pastimes in Vrindavan, India, 5,000 years ago. Krishna held up the divine hill for seven days to protect the denizens of Vrindavan from torrential rains sent by Indra, the king of demigods. <laughs> Prabhu, it, it, can you notice that uh, all the Vrindavan was uh, just helping with the stick? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let's see. He's in panic. They're, think, <laughs> they're thinking that like that they are helping. Yes. <laughs> He's like, oh, hold, hold it tightly. Don't let it fall. <laughs> Krishna, is, I'm holding it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Look, even Lord Balaram is amazed. He has also helped. Yeah. And the cows are like, what is going on? Okay, okay. So here is the nectar of instruction. Not no bad matter. So there is eleven instructions. Preface. The Krishna conscious movement is conducted under the supervision of Srila Rupa Goswami. The Gaudiya Vaishnavas or Bengali Vaishnavas are mostly followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of whom the six Goswamis of Vrindavan are direct disciples. Therefore, Srila Narottam Das Thakur has sung, Rupa Ragunata Pade Hai Ibe Akuti Kabehama Pujaba Se Yugala Piriti. When I am eager to understand the literature given by the Goswamis, then I shall be able to understand the transcendental loving affairs of Radha and Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in order to bestow upon human society the benediction of science of the science of Krishna. The most exalted of all the activities of Lord Krishna are his pastimes of conjugal love with the gopis. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in the mood of Srimati Radha Rani, the best of the gopis. Therefore, to understand the mission of Lord Shri, Lord Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and follow in his footsteps, one must very seriously follow in the footsteps of the six Goswamis, Sri Rupa, Sanatana, Bhattaragunad, Sri Jiva, Gopala, Bhatta and Dasaragunad. Sri Rupa Goswami was the leader of all the Goswamis and to guide our activities, he gave us this Upadesha Amrita, the nectar of instruction to follow. As Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left behind him the eight verses known as Sikshastaka, Rupa Goswami gave us Upadesha Amrita, so that we may become pure Vaishnavas. In all spiritual affairs, one's first duty is to control his mind and senses. Unless one controls his mind and senses, one cannot make any advancement in spiritual life. Everyone within this material world is engrossed in the modes of passion and ignorance. One must promote himself to the platform of goodness, sattva guna, by following the instructions of Rupa Goswami, and then everything concerning how to make further progress will be revealed. Advancement in Krishna consciousness depends on attitude of the follower. A follower of the Krishna consciousness movement should become a great, should become a perfect Goswami. A Vaishnavas are generally known as Goswamis. In Vrindavan, this is the title by which the director of each temple is known. One who wants to become a perfect devotee of Krishna must become a Goswami. Go means the senses and Swami means the master. Unless one controls his senses and mind, one cannot become a Goswami. 
to achieve the highest success in life by becoming a Goswami and then a pure devotee of the Lord, one must follow the instructions known as Upadesha Amrita, which was given by Srila Rupa Goswami. Srila Rupa Goswami was given many, has given many other books such as Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Vidagda Madhava and Lalita Madhava. But Upadesha Amrita constitutes the first instructions for neophyte devotees. One should follow these instructions very strictly. Then it will be easier to make one's life successful. Hare Krishna. So this is very important for us. At least for me, since I'm this neophyte one. Okay, Hare Okay, text one. Vacho vegam manasa kroda vegam jihva vegam upa udaro pashta vegam etan vegan yo vishata dira sarvam apinam apimam pritivim sashishyat. Vachaha of speech vegam urge manasaha of the mind kroda of anger, vegam, urge, jihba, of the tongue, vegam, urge, udara upashta, of the belly and genitals, vegam, urge, etan, these, vegan, urges, yaha, whoever, vishaheta, can tolerate, diraha, sober, sarvam, all, api, certainly, imam, this, pritvim, world, saha, that personality, Shishyad can make disciples. Translation. A sober person who can tolerate the urge to speak, the mind's demands, the actions of anger and the urges of the tongue, belly and genitals, is qualified to make disciples all over the world. Okay, Haribo, anyone can continue with the purport. Hare Krishna Guru. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Perfect. In Srimad Bhagavatam, 6th uh, canto, 1st chapter, 9th uh, ninth ninth and 10th. Uh, Parikshit Maharaja placed the number of intelligent questions before the Sukadeva question. One of these questions was, why do people undergo atonement if they cannot control their sense? For in sense, a thief may know perfectly well that he may be arrested for the for his stealing, and he may actually even see a thief arrested by the police, yet he continues to steal. Experience is gathered by the hearing and seeing. One who is less intelligent gather experience by seeing, and one who is more intelligent gather experience by hearing. When an intelligent person hears from the law books and sastra or scripture that stealing is not good, and hear that the thief is punished when arrested. He refrain from a he refrain from thief. A less intelligent person may first have to be arrested and punished for the stealing to learn to stop stealing. However, a rascal, a policeman, may have to experience the both hearing and seeing, and may even be punished. But still, he continues still. Even if such a person atones and is punished by the government, he will again commit theft as soon as he comes out of jail. If punishment in the jail is considered atonement, what is the benefit of such an atonement? Thus, Parikshit Maharaj inquired, Drashta Sruta Dhyam Yat Papam Janan Api Janan Api Atmano Hitam Karoti Bhyo Vivasa Pariyasitam Ahokratam Ahokratam Kavachin Nivarte Bhadrat Kavachit Charati Tatapuna Pariyasitam Ahokratam Manye Kunjara Savavat He compared atonement to an elephant bathing. The elephant may take a very nice bath in the river, but as soon as it came out, came onto the bank. It threw that all over his body. Its body. Then, then it is is the value of the bath thing. Similarly, many spiritual practitioners chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra and at the same time commit many forbidden things. 
thinking, thinking that their chanting will counteract their offenses of the of the ten offense, ten type of offense one can commit while chanting the holy name of the Lord. This offense is called nama balada yasya hi papa buddhi, committing simple activities on the strength of the chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Similarly, certain Christians go to the church to confess their sins, thinking that the confessing their sins before a priest and performing some finances will relieve them from the result of their weekly sins. As soon as Saturday is over and Sunday comes, they again begin their sinful activities, expecting to be forgiven at the next sun, sun, Saturday. This kind of Pariyasita or atonement is condemned by Parikshit Maharaja, the most in the intelligent king of most in the intelligent king of his time. Sukadeva Goswami, equally intelligent as a befitting the special master of the Maharaj Parikshit, answered the king and confirmed that his statement concerning atonement was correct. A sinful activity cannot be counteracted by the pious activity. A sinful activity cannot be counteracted by pious activity. Thus, real prayer Prajita atonement is the awakening of our dormant Krishna consciousness. Real atonement involves coming to real knowledge. And for this, there is a standard process. When one follows a regulated hygienic process, process, he does not fail sick. A human being is meant to be trained according to certain principles to revive his original knowledge. Such a method methodical life is described a tapasya. One can be gradually elevated to the standard of the real knowledge or Krishna consciousness by practicing austerity and calimacy brahmacharya by, by controlling the mind and controlling the senses by giving up one's possession in charity by being allowed about Beautiful. By keeping clean and by practicing yoga asanas. However, if one is fortunate enough to get the association of pure devotee, he can easily surface all the practices for controlling the mind by mystic yoga process. Simply by following the regulative principle of Krishna consciousness, refraining from religious sex, meat eating, intoxication, and gambling, and by engaging in the Engaging in the service of Supreme Lord under the direction of the bona fide spiritual master, this EG process is being recommended by Srila Rupa Goswami. Anyone want to read through or I continue? Rupa. First one. Uh, okay, bro. One must control. First one must control his speaking power. Every one of us has the power to speak. As soon as we get an opportunity, we begin to speak. If we do not speak about Krishna or about all sorts of nonsense, the ordinary field speaks up by talking. And similarly, everyone who has a tongue wants to speak, even if all, even if all, even if all he has to say is nonsense. The croaking of the thought, however, simply invites the snake. Please come here and eat me. Nevertheless, also it is inviting death. The thought works on croaking. The talking of Maya, uh, materialistic men and impersonist Mayavadi philosophers may be compared to the croaking of frogs. They are always speaking nonsense unless inviting death to catch them. Controlling self-imposed silence, the external process of Mauna, as Mayavadi philosophers. Things. Silence may appear helpful for some time, but ultimately proves a failure. The meaning of controlled speech conveyed by Srila Rupa Goswami advocates the positive process of Krishna Karatha, engaging the speaking process, engulfing the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. The tongue can less glorify the form, qualities, and costumes of the Lord. The preacher of Krishna Katha is always beyond the clutches of death. This is the significance of controlling urge to speak. The restlessness or fickleness of the mind, Mano Vega, is controlled when man can fix his mind on the lotus feet of Krishna. The Chaitanya Charitamrata says, 
विष्णु सूर्य समा माया है अंधकार नहीं माया राधिकार विष्ण इज जस्ट लाइक द सन एंड माया इज जस्ट लाइक डार्कनेस इफ द सन इज प्रेजेंट देयर इज नो क्वेश्चन ऑफ डार्कनेस सिमिलरली इफ विष्ण इज प्रेजेंट इन द माइंड देयर इज नो पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ द माइंड बीइंग एडिटेटेड बाय माया एक्सपीरियंस द योगिक प्रोसेस ऑफ नेगेटिंग ऑल मटेरियल थॉट्स विल नॉट हेल्प ट्राई टू क्रिएट अ वैक्यूम इन द माइंड इज आर्टिफिशियल However, if one thinks of if one always thinks of Krishna and how to serve Krishna best, one's mind will naturally be controlled. Similarly, anger can be controlled. We cannot stop anger or to simply become angry with those who blaspheme the Lord or the devotees of the Lord. We can control our anger in Krishna consciousness. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became angry with the miscreant brothers, Jagai and Madai, who blasphemed. and start to type nichand prabhu in his six last god chaitanya ro runada pisuni chena taro rabi sahishtana one should be humbler than the grass and more tolerant than the tree one may then ask why the lord exhibited his anger the point is that one should be ready to hold it all in self to one's own self but when krishna or his pure devotees new devotee becomes angry and he acts like fire and is offended so the anger cannot be stopped but it can be applied right rightly pass in anger that hanuma said by lanka this devotee of lord ramachandra this means that he utilizes his anger arjuna serves and as, as another example he was not willing to fight but krishna incited his anger you must fight to fight it of anger is not possible anger is control however when utilized in the service of the lord as for the urges of the tongue we all experience that tongue wants to eat palatable dishes generally we should not allow the tongue to eat a fun to eat choice but we should control the tongue by supplying prasada the devotee's attitude is that he will eat only when krishna gives him prasada that is the way to control the urge of the tongue one should take prasada at scheduled times and do not eat in restaurants or sweet meal shops simply to satisfy the whims of the tongue or belly If we stick to the principle of taking only prasada, the urges of the belly and tongue can be controlled. The similar way, in the similar manner, the urges of the genitals, the sex impulse, can be controlled. We not use it unnecessarily. The genitals should be used to beget a Krishna conscious child. Otherwise, they should not be used. A Krishna conscious movement encourages marriage. Not for the satisfaction of the genitals, but for the begetting of Krishna conscious children. As soon as the children are little grown up, they are sent to our Gurukul schools in Dallas, Texas, where they are trying to become fully Krishna conscious devotees. Many such Krishna conscious children are required, and one who is capable of bringing forth Krishna conscious offspring is allowed to utilize his genitals. When one is fully practiced in the methods of Krishna conscious control. he can become qualified to be to be a modified spiritual master is in his anubhuti explanation of upadesh amrita shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati tapur rice and our material identification creates three kinds of urges the urge to speak the urge or demands of the mind and the demands of the body when a living entity falls victim to these three types of urges his life becomes auspicious One who practices resisting these demands or urges is called tapasya. Or one who practices austerities by such tapasya, one can overcome victimization by the material energy, the external potency of the supreme personal God. When we refer to the urge to speak, we refer to useless talking, such as of such as that of the impulsive Mayavadi philosophers, or of persons engaged in futile activities, technically called karma karma. Or of materialistic person who simply want to enjoy life through restriction. All such talks or relations are practical exhibitions of the urge to speak. Many people are talking nonsensely, writing volumes of useless books, and all of this is a result of the urge to speak. To contract this tendency, we have to divert our talking to the subject of Krishna. This is explained in the Bhagavad Bhagavat, Nayad Bhashas, Sitra Padam. हरेर यशो जगत पवित्र प्रग्नीता मन 
Some persons are attracted to the eating of meat, fish, crabs, eggs, and other things produced by semina and blood and eaten in the form of dead bodies. Others are attracted by eating vegetables, papers, smears, and milk products, but all for a sense of, all for a satisfaction of the tongues, demands. Thus eating for sense gratification, including the use of extra quantities of spices like chili and tamarind, is to be given up by Krishna conscious persons. The use of pan, pan, hari, hari taki, pickleness, various spices, in pawn making, tobacco, LSD, Murujanga, opium, and he is indulged in to fulfill illicit desires. If we practice accepting or accepting only remnants of food offered to Krishna, it is possible to get free from my optimization, vegetables, grains. So, Vegetable screens. Scroll down. Fruits, milk, milk products, and water are proper food to offer to the Lord, as Lord Krishna himself describes. However, if one accepts prasada only because of its palatable taste, unless it's too much, he also falls there to satisfying, trying to satisfy the demands of the time. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught us to avoid very palatable dishes. Even while eating prasada, if one offers palatable dishes to the deity with the intention of eating such nice food, we are involved in trying to satisfy the demands of the tongue. We accept the invitation of each man with the idea of his palatable food. We are also demands of the tongue. In Chaitanya Saitamrita, it is said, Ishvara Lala Se E Iti Uti Daya Sen. He sees no dara parayana krishna nahi paya. That, uh, that person who runs here and there seeking to satisfy, seeking to gratify his palate, and who is always attracted to the desires of the ungentles, is unable to attain. As stated before, the tongue belly and gentles are all situated in his right hand, and they fall in the same category. Lord Chaitanya said, Babe Ara Balana Pari De. Do not dress consciously and do not eat delicious food stuffs. Those who control from disease, do those who suffer from diseases of the stomach, must be unable to control the edges of the belly, at least according to this analysis. When we desire to eat more than necessary, we automatically create many conveniences in life. However, if we observe fasting such days like this in the past, Condition the demands of the demands of the belly. As far as surgeons of the angel are concerned, there are two proper and improper or legal or illicit sex. When a man is properly chosen, it can carry according to the rules and regulations of Shastra. Unnecessary or begetting nice children that is legal and delicious. Otherwise, he may adopt many artificial means to satisfy the demands of the demands of the gentles, and he may not use any restraint. When one indulges in illicit sex life, as defined by the Shastra, either by thinking, planning, talking, or about, or actually having sexual intercourse, or by satisfying the gentles by artificial means, he is caught in the clutches of Maya. His instructions. These instructions imply not only to the householders but also to chag but also to chagis or those who are in the religious order of life. In this book, Prema Vivarta, Sabra Seven, Sri Jagadananda Pandita says Vairagi Bhai Grama Kata Na Sunibe Kane Gramya Varta Na Sahibe Yabi Malibe Ane Safane Ona Kara Bi Bai Sri Sambasana Grihe Sri 
सजीयाचवान यदि सह प्रणय रखे गौरांगी रसने छोटा हरिदास कथा साके जैना माने बलाना कवि अर बलाना श्री प्रभे हृदय ते राधा कृष्ण सर्वदा सेवी बे माय डियर ब्रदर यू आर इन द यू नो ऑर्डर ऑफ लाइफ एंड शुड नॉट लिसन टू टॉक अबाउट ऑर्डिनरी वर्ल्डली थिंग्स नॉट शुड यू टॉक अबाउट वर्ल्डली थिंग्स व्हेन यू मीट विद अदर्स डू नॉट थिंक ऑफ वुमेन इवन इन ड्रीम्स दे हैव एक्सेप्टेड द यू नो ऑर्डर ऑफ लाइफ इट इज अवो दैट फॉरबिड्स टू यूज टू एसोसिएट विद वुमेन इफ यू विश टू एसोसिएट विद चैतन्य महाप्रभु यू मस्ट ऑलवेज रिमेंबर दैट इंस्टेंट ऑफ छोटा हरिदास and how he was rejected by the lord do not eat luxurious dishes and dress in fine garments but always remain humble and serve the lord shri 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 radha krishna in your heart of hearts and conclude he said one who can control these six items speech mind anger tongue belly and gentles is to be called a goswami or swami swami or goswami swami means master and go swami means master of the go or senses when one automate when one accepts the renounced you know, order of life he automatically assumes the title of swami this does not mean that he is the master of his family community or society he must be master of his senses unless one is master of his senses he should not be called go swami or should be called go swami but go dasa servant of the senses Following the footsteps of the six Goswamis of Ramdavana, all Swamis and Goswamis should fully engage in the constant loving service of the Lord. As opposed to this, the Goswamis are engaged in the service of the senses or in the service of the material world. How know their engagement? Rahalan Maharaj has further described the Goswamis or Adhanta Go, which refers to those one whose senses are not controlled. An Adhanta Go cannot become a servant of Krishna. श्रीमद्भागवत श्रीमद्भागवत प्रहलाद महाराज से मतीर्ण कृष्ण स्वतो वीपादेता ंग प्रचलो नियमाग्रह जन संग लौल्यम चाटपीरपाक्तिर्विनाशयतीयासाहोवर्ड्रचाल आग्रह too much attachment to or uh, agraha too much neglect of jana sangha association with worldly minded persons cha and laulyam ardent longing or greed cha and shat pi by by the six bhakti devotional service vinashyati is destroyed <clears throat> translation One's devotional service is spoiled when he becomes too entangled in the following six activities: eating more than necessary, or collecting more funds than required, 
over endeavoring for mundane things that are very difficult to obtain, talking unnecessarily about mundane subject matters, practicing the scriptural rules and regulations only for the sake of following them and not for the sake of spiritual advancement or rejecting the rules and regulations of the scriptures and working independently or whimsically, associating with worldly minded persons who are not interested in Krishna consciousness and seeks being greedy for mundane, and mundane achievements. <clears throat> Purport. Yes, bro, uh, this is really serious matter because all these six, I know that almost everything is being broken by me and many of us. So this is important to learn because this is what spoils the service. If one does this, it's going to get spoiled no matter what. So this should be diminished. Yeah, and I have most of them, like <laughs> almost almost all of them. Yeah. yeah, this is hard, this for the practicing the scriptural rules and only for and the last part. Rejecting the rules and regulations of the scriptures and working independently or whimsical. Yeah. That's, that's one thing that many do. And work demanded per yeah, that's also being greedy. And overeating. It's also many eat a lot. Yeah, that, that's definitely me. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, in this, it was also said that eating too much prasadam, that that is like unnecessarily too much, that just eating and eating and finishing eating and then going back to eating, that's also sense gratification, even though it's prasadam. Terrible purpose. Human life is meant for plain living and high thinking. Since all conditioned living beings are under the control of Lord's third energy, this material world is de designed so that one is obliged to work. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has three primary energies or potencies. The first is called Andaranga Shakti or the internal potency. The second is called Tatasta Shakti or the marginal potency. The third is called Pahiranga Shakti or the external potency. Living entities constitute the marginal potency and they are situated between the internal and external potencies. Be being subordinate as eternal servants of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Jivatmas or atomic living entities must remain under the control of either the internal or external potency. When they are under the control of the internal potency, they display their natural constitutional activity namely constant engagement in the devotional service of the Lord. This is stated in Bhagavad Gita, <clears throat> Mahatmanas Tumam Parta Daivim Prakritim Ashrita Pajan Jan Jan Ya Manaso Kyatva Putarim Avyayam. O son of Prita Prata Prita. Son of Prita, those who are not deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, original and, and inexhaustible. The word Mahatma refers to those who are broad-minded, not cripple-minded. Cripple-minded persons always engage in satisfying, satisfying their senses, sometimes expand their activities in order to, in order to do good for others through some ism like nationalism, humanitarianism, or altruism. They may reject personal sense gratification for the sense gratification of others, like the members of their family, community, or society, either national or international. Actually, all this is extended sense gratification from personal to commun communal to social. This may all be very good from the material point of view, but such activities have no spiritual value. The basis of such activity is sense gratification, either personal or extended. Only when a person gratifies the senses of the Supreme Lord can he be called a Mahatma or broad-minded person. In the above uh, quoted verse from Bhagavad Gita, the words Daivim Prakritim refer to the control of the internal potency or pleasure potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This pleasure potency is manifested as Srimati Radharani or her expansion Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. 
When the individual jiva souls are under the control of the internal energy, their only engagement is the satisfaction of Krishna or Vishnu. This is the position of a Mahatma. If one is not a Mahatma, he is a Duratma or a cripple-minded person. Such mentally crippled Duratmas are put under the control of the Lord's external potency, Mahamaya. Indeed, all living entities, entities within this material world are under the control of Mahamaya, whose business is to subject them to the influence of threefold miseries, Atitaivika, Klesha, sufferings caused by the demigods, demigods such as droughts, earthquakes, and storms, Adipautika, Klesha, sufferings caused by other living entities like insects or enemies, and Adyatmika, Klesha, sufferings caused by one's own body and mind, such as mental and physical uh, infirmities. Daiva Putatma Hetavaha, the conditioned souls subject, subject, subjected to, the, to these three miseries by the control of the external energy suffer various difficulties. The main problem confronting the conditioned souls is the repetition of birth, old age, disease, and death. In the material world, one has to work for the maintenance of the body and soul. But how can one perform such work in a way that is favorable for the, for the execution of Krishna consciousness? Everyone requires possessions such as food, grains, clothing, money, and other things necessary for the maintenance of the body, but one should not collect more than necessary for his actual basic needs. If this natural principle is followed, there will be no difficulty in maintaining the body. According to nature's arrangement, living entities lower, lower on the evolutionary scale do not eat or collect more than necessary. Consequently, in the animal kingdom, there is generally no economic problem or scarcity of necessities. If a bag of rice is placed in a public place, birds will come to eat a few grains and go away. A human being, however, will, will take away the whole bag. He, he will eat all his stomach can hold and then try to keep the rest in storage. According to scriptures, this collecting of more than necessary at Yahara is prohibited. Now the entire world is suffering because of it. Collecting and eating more than necessary also causes prayasa or unnecessary endeavor. By God's arrangement, anyone in any part of the world can live very peacefully if he has some land and a milk, milk cow. There is no need for a man to move from one place to another to earn a livelihood, for one can produce food grains locally and get milk from cows. That can solve all economic problems. Fortunately, man has been given higher intelligence for the cultivation of Krishna consciousness or the understanding of God, one's relationship with him and the ultimate goal of life, love of God. Unfortunately, so-called civilized man, not caring for God realization, utilizes his intelligence to get more than necessary and simply eat to satisfy the tongue. By God's arrangement, there is sufficient scope for the production of milk and grains for human beings all over the world. But instead of using their higher intelligence to cultivate God consciousness, so-called intelligent men misuse their intelligence to produce many unnecessary and unwanted things. Thus factor factories, slaughterhouses, bottles and liquor shops are opened. If people are advised not to collect too many goods, eat too much or work unnecessarily to possess artificial amenities, they think they are being advised to return to a primitive way of life. Generally, people do not like to accept plain living and high thinking. That is their unf unfortunate position. Human life is meant for God realization and the human being is given higher intelligence for this purpose. Those who believe that this higher intelligence is meant to attain a higher state should follow the instructions of the Vedic lit literature. <laughs> By taking such in instructions for higher authorities, one can actually become situated in perfect knowledge and give real meaning to life. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Sri Sutta Goswami describes the proper human dharma in this way. Dharma sya ya pavargyasya narto Tayo pakalpate nartasya karmaikantasya 
kamolapaya his mrittaha. All occupational engagements, dharma, are certainly meant for ultimate liberation. They should never be performed for material gain. Furthermore, one who is engaged in the ultimate occupational service, dharma, should never use material gain to cultivate sense gratification. The first step in human civilization consists of occupational engagements performed according to scriptural injunctions. The higher intelligence of a human being should be trained to understand basic dharma. In human society, there are various religious conceptions characterized as Hindu, Christian, Hebrew, Mohammedan, Buddhist, and so on. For without religion, human society is no better than any animal society. As stated above, dharmasya ya pavargyasya narto retayo pakalpate, Religion is meant for attaining emancipation, not for getting bread. Sometimes human society manufactures a system of so-called religion aimed at material advancement, but that is far from the purpose of true dharma. Religion entails understanding the laws of, laws of God because the proper execution of these laws ultimately leads one out of material entanglement. That is the true purpose of religion. Unfortunately, people accept religion for material prosperity because of atyahara, or an excessive desire for such prosperity. True religion, however, instructs people to be satisfied with the bare necessities of life while cultivating Krishna consciousness. Even though we require economic development, true religion allows it only for supplying the bare necessities of material existence. Jivasya tattva Jikyasa. The real purpose of life is to inquire about the absolute truth. If our endeavor, Rajasa, is not to inquire about the absolute truth, we will simply increase our endeavor to satisfy our artificial needs. A spiritual aspirant should avoid mundane endeavor. Another impediment is Prajalpa, unnecessary talking. When we mix with a few friends, we immediately begin unnecessary talking sounding just like croaking toads. If we must talk, we should talk about Krishna consciousness movement. Those outside of the Krishna consciousness movement are interested in reading heaps of newspapers, magazines and novels, solving crossword puzzles and doing many other nonsensical things. In this fashion, people simply waste their valuable time and energy. In the Western countries, old men retired from active life Play cards, fish, watch television, and debate about useless socio-political schemes. All these and other frivolous activities are included in the Prachalpa category. Inter intelligent persons interested in Krishna consciousness should never take part in such activities. All right, that Haribol, someone else can continue. Haribo, who wants to read? Then the Sangha refers to associating with persons who interested in Krishna to strictly avoid such association. Shilanarutam Das Chakura has therefore advised us to avoid the association of Krishna conscious devotees. Bhakta Sani Vasan, one should always engage in the service of the Lord. The association of the Lord's devotees, association with those engaged in a similar line of business, the very conducts conducive to advancement in their business. Consequently, materialist persons form various associations and class to enhance their endeavors. For example, in this field, for example, in the business world, we find such institutions such as stock and chamber of commerce. Similarly, we have established the international society of Krishna consciousness and fortunately to associate those who have not this association offered by our own movement is increasing by day. Many people from different parts of the world are joined by the way and they don't wish for consciousness. We are the which are in the countries that those who can 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and with no solution to the economic problem of mankind, and things were in the hands of the country or the place of 100. If a hundred dollar bill is lying off, someone picked up a and picked it. Such a man is not finished. Another man sees him and decided that it remained here. He should not touch another's property and still under his own protection. He is unaware of his property for use. The thought was that those is a hundred dollar bill. And he could have um, find a tool of shit and deliver it to him. This man has not steal the money to spend for himself, nor does he neglect it and let it lie in the street by taking it and delivering it to the man who has lost it. This man is both honest and wise. Simply transferring wealth from capitalist to communist cannot solve the problem of modern politics, but it has been demonstrated that when when a communist gets money, he uses it for, for his own sense gratification. The wealth of the world actually belongs to Krishna, and every living entity, man and animal, has a right to use God put by his maintenance. If one takes more than his maintenance, it requires he be he is a thief, and as such, he is liable to be punished by the laws of nature. The wealth of the world should be used for the welfare of all living entities. But that is the plan of modern mother nature. Everyone has the right to live by utilizing the wealth of the Lord. When one can keep scientifically utilizing the Lord's property, they will no longer encroach upon one another's right. Then a society can be formed. The basic principle for such a special society stated in the first month of each open is Isha Vashamidam Sarvam. Isha Vashamidam Sarvam Yatim Jagatya Jagatyam Jagat Tena Jagatya Punjika Magra Magra Gradaha Asya Swid Dhanam. Everything animate or inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and worn by the law. One should therefore accept only those things necessary for himself, which are set which are set aside by as his quota, and should not accept other things, knowing well then well to whom they belong. Or well that this real world is designed. Krishna conscious Krishna conscious devotees know well very well that this material world is designed by the complete arrangement of the law to fulfill all the necessities of without their having to encroach upon the life or rights of another person, one another. This complete arrangement affords a proper port of health for everyone. According to his feelings, everyone may live peacefully according to According to, the, according to the principle of pain, living, and high thing, thinking, unfortunately, materialists who have neither faith in the plan of God or in nor in your aspiration, unfortunately, materialists who have neither faith in the plan of God nor any aspiration for a higher spiritual development is just their God given intelligence. They make full positions. They devise many systems such as capitalism. And materialistic advance their material position. They are not interested in the loss of God or in the higher goal. Always ambitious to fulfill their ultimate desires, such as gratification. They are conscious by their ability to exploit their fellow living things. Probably someone can continue. Yes, Prabhu. Thank you so much. When human society gives up these elementary faults enumerated by Shla Rupa Goswami, Adyahara, etc., all enmity will cease between men and animals, capitalist and communist, and so forth. In addition, all problems of economic or political maladjustment and instability will be solved. This pure consciousness is awakened by the proper spiritual education and practice offered scientifically by the Krishna consciousness movement. 
This Krishna consciousness movement offers a spiritual community that can bring about a peaceful condition in the world. Every intelligent man should purify his consciousness and rid himself of the above-mentioned six hindrances to devotional service by taking wholehearted shelter of this Krishna consciousness movement. Revolve. Okay, now let's go to six Astagam prayers. Tomorrow we continue from text three. This, this text two was, this is really important to always read again and again. Two, uh, two, three is just opposite to three, Prabhu. No, two. Yes, Prabhu. Four is the loving action. What, Prabhu? Four is the loving action, bro. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah, it's here. You go. Okay, now let's go to six Cheto Darpana Marjanam Baba Mahadava Kinirva Panam Sreya Kairava Chandrika Vitaranam Vityava Du Jivanam Anandam Putivartanam Pratipadam Purnam Ritasvadanam Sarvatmas Napanam Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam Nam Nama Kari Bhavdani Jisava Saptisu Satra Pitani Mita Osmarana Kala Itadar Sito Tripa Bhagavan Mamapi Durdeva जगदीश Ajinan Datanu Jakin Karam, Patitamma, Vishame, Pavam, Putao, Kripaya Tava Pada Pankaja, Stita Duli, Satrisam, Vichintaya Nayanam Galadas Rudaraya, Badanam Gadgada Rudaya, Gira, Pulaka Nichitam Bapu Kada, Tavanam Grehane, Bavishati Yuga Yitam Nimeshena, Sukhusha, Vishayitam, Sunya Yitam, Pedestan, Siva Padradam Pinashtum, Karshanam Mahadam Karodava, Vitatava Vidatu Lempato, Napran Mantasa Eva Naparaha Prabhu Sikshasta Basilavi Padeshani, Krishna Prema Maki Tara Vadivini Ribo translation. Glory to the Sri Krishna Sankirtan, which cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years and extinguishes the fire of conditional life of repeated birth and death. This Sankirtan movement is the prime benediction for humanity at large, because it spreads the rays of the benediction moon. It is the life of all transcendental knowledge. It increases the ocean of transcendental bliss and it enables us to fully taste the nectar for which we are always anxious. Oh my Lord, your power engine can render, render all benediction to the living beings, and thus you have hundreds and millions of names like Krishna and Govinda. In this transcendental names, you have invested all your transcendental energies. There are not even hard and fast souls for chanting oh, these names. Oh my Lord, out of oh my Lord, kindness, your name alone can render all benediction to the living beings, and thus you have hundreds and millions of names like Krishna and Govinda. In the transcendental name, you have invested all your transcendental energy. There are not even hard and fast rules for the chanting this name. Oh my Lord, out of kindness, you enable us to easily approach you by your holy name. But I am so unfortunate that I, uh, that I have no attraction for them. One should chant the holy name of the Lord in a humble state of mind, thinking oneself lower than straw in the street. One should be more tolerant than a tree devoid of all sense of false prestige, and should be ready to offer all respect to others. In such a state of mind, one can chant the holy name of the Lord constantly. Oh.
O oh, Almighty Lord, I have no desire to accumulate wealth, nor do I desire beautiful women, nor do I want any number of followers. I only want your causeless devotional service, birth after birth. O son of Maharaj Nanda, Krishna, I am your eternal servitor. Yes, somehow or other, I have fallen into the ocean of birth and death. Please pick me up from this ocean of death, but ocean of death, and place me one of the atoms at your lotus. O oh my Lord, when will my eyes be decorated with tears of love flowing constantly when I chant your holy name? When will my voice choke up and when will the hairs of my body stand on end at the recitation of your name? O oh Govinda, feeling your separations, I am considering a moment to be like 12 years or more. Tears are pouring from my eyes like torrents of rain. I am feeling all vacant in the world in your absence. Right. I know no one but Krishna as my Lord, and he shall remain so, even if he handles me roughly by his embrace, or makes me broken-hearted by not being present before me. He is completely free to do anything and everything, for he is always my worshipful Lord, unconditionally. Haribo, Sri Sikshastakam ki jai, Adinam Sankirtan ki jai. Panchadatva ki jai, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai, Nityananda Prabhu ki jai, Jagat Guru Shila Bhaktivedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Nidai Gaurapremande, Hari Hari Bo.